All right. Good day. Good day. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Your Next Customer. I'm Eddie Peters, and we are thrilled to have you again today. We're here to bring you that actionable intel in reference to sales, marketing, and of course, good old fashioned customer service. And I'm joined here today with my good friend, Mr. Chuck Boatler. And Chuck is the business development manager for Hagerstown Magazine, home of the hot list. So uh, we're in for a treat. We've got some great information here in reference to what you need to know about marketing. And Chuck, just before I come back to you, I uh, just want to, of course, thank all of our good friends uh, at the Washington County Chamber of Commerce for being our partners and allowing us to be here to bring another wonderful show to you. Can't do it without you and can't do it without you also as well in our audience. So with that, Chuck, good morning. Hey, Eddie, thanks for having me today. Oh, absolutely, sir. I'm glad we could get into your busy schedule. Listen, I, I just love telling everyone Hagerstown Magazine and home of the hot list. Uh, so before we get into all of this actionable intel and the bullet points that you and I have been talking about, I know we're excited to do so. Tell us a little bit about Chuck uh, and your uh, mission there at Hagerstown Magazine and uh, just what you're looking forward to doing in the upcoming year. Sure. And uh, I haven't been with Hagerstown Magazine uh, too long. I've spent about 35 years in the uh, marketing world. I've worked in the newspaper industry, the online industry, magazine industry. Uh, I've done some loyalty marketing. And right now, my charge is just to uh, keep Hagerstown Magazine a little more visible and to also help folks make a little more sense out of uh, their own local marketing efforts as well. Mm -hmm. making sense out of their own marketing efforts. And that's really where I, I wanted to kind of get into the weeds a little bit for the time that we'll have this morning, because, you know, you and I were talking, of course, off camera a little bit. And uh, one of the points that we just had to go ahead and admit, when you're talking about a new person who is starting out, uh, regardless of their industry, and of course, marketing is something that is very apparent today, you know, we have to dive in with both feet to a degree, but it can actually be darn scary. <laughs> Does that make sense, right? When you start hearing a lot of different talk about it, talk to us a little bit about uh, how we can really kind of ease into that and maybe go from there and segue into some of the most common mistakes that people do right off, right out of the gate. Sure. I, I think the biggest issue <clears throat> that most folks will have, I think we all have to admit that we come to the table with a certain bias. If we are used to reading that newspaper at our coffee table in the morning, we're going to think, you know, newspaper is the way to go. Uh, or if we listen to a very specific radio station and we really enjoy that, we think, boy, if I had my message on there, that would be awesome. So we have to realize that when it comes to marketing, selecting what you do in terms of how you consume media may not necessarily be the best fit for your business. So I am not here specifically to tell everyone who's listening that Hagerstown Magazine is the way to go. We have our audience. We appeal to a certain demographic. Uh, our advertisers do well. But for the most part, we have to take a look at um, what other options are out there and how we can put together a nice strategy that acknowledges the marketing process necessary to take a customer from a prospect to a uh, to a sale. Well, absolutely. And one of the things that I always wanted to know the difference of, and you talked about this also as well, I want you to go into a little detail because you talked about doing the marketing and planning marketing strategy and those being two totally different things. Talk to us a little bit more about that, Chuck. Sure, Eddie. It's really the difference between uh, strategy and execution. I do run into folks all the time who are constantly putting things on Facebook or LinkedIn, or they're showing up at a trade show and putting up, you know, a nice display to uh, display their business somewhere. And then when I talk to them, someone will say, well, you know, Mary over there, she does the marketing for us. And sometimes people don't know the difference between the execution part, the physically putting out ads, setting up displays, and the strategy behind it. And 
And what I generally find is that people who do the marketing aren't necessarily always involved in the strategy. You know, if I would talk to them and say, well, over the next year, what is the strategy for your business? What are you hoping to accomplish? Who are you trying to reach? Have you set goals for your company? How are you going to accomplish that? And unfortunately, people kind of go straight to, you know, what they're doing with social media or advertising or events and believe that that's strategy. That's that's really nothing more than the execution of that strategy. And do you think that that goes back to the, the point you mentioned initially, our own biases? In other words, selecting what you think based on how you've gotten your information or what is appealing to you and how you tend to kind of broad brush that across the board and say, I think this is the way to go. I, I think that's part of it, but I, I believe that that's also the very end game part of it. Hey, you know, I, I do the marketing, we've done this, we've done that. And sometimes if that's all you have, people can be a little disappointed in their marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that everyone here on this audience at some point, either themselves can say, or they know someone who said, oh, I've done marketing in this particular medium and it, and it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd certainly like to eliminate as much of that as possible. And what we find that, you know, the, 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 the biases and the ability to actually have things working in concert with each other can really get in the way and can also lead to some assumptions and analysis that certain things don't work or work better than others. In other words, mm -hmm. we tend to take a... Uh, a long-term strategy based on short-term results on something. And that over the long-term, I mean, good marketing is a, is based on long-term growth. That's what it's meant to do for a, uh, for a client. And you have a strategy to talk to us about that also as well. And I wanted to ask you though, you know, we said it can just flat out be a little scary because the B word comes in to play and of course budget. Mm -hmm. So when, I think a lot of times, a lot of people will eliminate the fact that they could seek out someone who has all of this knowledge like yourself and all of that experience in terms of helping to target, because that's really a consultation, right? That's the consultative side of the targeting your audience. Who are you trying to reach? That's part of the strategy. But then you start thinking about immediately, oh my goodness, how much is that going to cost? And I think that that also in turn drives people to say, you know what, I got this. You know, how hard can it be, right? right. And then right. maybe they don't get the results and they find themselves bouncing all over and never staying consistent. How important is it, number one, to have some sort of a marketing coordinator uh, in some sense and to be consistent and persistent over time? I think for a small local business, just getting started, you're absolutely right that the budget can be an issue. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the U.S. Small Business Administration has a general guideline that says that you should be spending about seven to eight percent of your total gross company revenues on marketing activities during the year, maybe as high as 15 percent if you're in a very competitive market. And if you're a small business owner and you have to hire someone, well, there goes that budget right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do was to maybe convey a simple little five-step process mm -hmm. that someone here might be able to just write down right now. They write down one, two, three, four, five, and use that to help guide them in every marketing activity that they do, they will find that they're actually becoming a little more intentional and a little more coordinated with the market, with the marketing. That, that's not to say that that makes them a marketing expert. I mean, I always like to tell the story that um, you don't want Chuck Boatler doing root canal on you. I am not a dentist. That you don't want Chuck mm -hmm. Boatler messing around with your car. I am not a car repair person. Mm -hmm. At, you know, you don't want me tinkering around with your heating and air condi conditioning system in your house. That is not my area of expertise, mm -hmm. but you would be amazed at how many dentists, auto repair places, and HVAC companies think that they're marketing experts. Right. 
It's so, the same way the other way around. So for yeah. all of us that are uh, realize that uh, you never want to trust your memory when you can trust your pen instead, I want to get everyone in, to go ahead and get their pen and paper ready for this process because we talked about this before and it's pretty impressive and I'm really excited for you to lay this on us right now, Chuck. Sure, and and just to just to show you, this isn't something that Chuck Boatler made up. Uh, years ago, I, I had the the privilege of working, uh, doing some work under um, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Richard Rosen, who had first coined the phrase convergence marketing. And you can look up Amazon; he's got a couple books on that on on convergence marketing. It's where the branding efforts of a company actually come together with the direct response uh, elements of advertising and how you eventually can get them all to work together. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, Dr. Richard Rosen, and, and I, I looked at it, I started applying some of those principles to some of the clients that I've worked with over the past 35 years. And it, it makes sense. It, it takes a little bit of thought, it takes a little bit of effort, but for a small local uh, business owner, it can actually uh, actually help. And okay. So, so, so you I, have I, this process and you said it's, a, it's five activities in the marketing process. Sure. Um, and I would say the number one is probably the one that everyone is the most familiar with. And that is the, the branding activities. Okay. So number one, you just write down as branding. What do you want to be known for? You know, are you the are you the cheapest guy in town? Is that what you want to be known for? Uh, do you provide, you know, the, the, the best service? Are you the person who cleans up other companies mistakes? You know, how do you want to be known? So you need to establish what is your brand? Um, and probably 40% of the dollars that you will ever spend on marketing will be just strictly branding. So getting people used to knowing you, and, and again, whether you're using newspapers, radio, Facebook, social media, any of that, you, to be branding effectively, you need to be very consistent. You might as well just decide that I need to be out there on a consistent basis and make sure that people are familiar with you. And think about it. Suppose you get a plumbing leak in your house over the weekend mm -hmm. and you go online and, oh man, I've got to find someone to get this taken care of. Are you more likely to call that person that you're familiar with and who has a good reputation or are you more likely to call someone you've never heard of before? Absolutely. So, so you know, that's why the branding elements of what you, you need to do, whatever you choose to do, be consistent with it. And you might as well figure that 40% of your marketing dollars are going to go in that direction. Uh, the, second, the second step of the process, and you'll see that the goal is to eventually move someone through that spectrum of marketing mm -hmm. from branding to actually becoming a customer. Mm -hmm. The second one, once you've earned the right to move on in the minds of these customers, you need to let people know what you're going to do to help them either avoid pain in their life or seek pleasure. In other words, avoid the negative or enhance the positive. So for instance, if you've had problems with a particular company's responsiveness, uh, suppose you have had an issue and you're just not getting calls back, well, that's a pain point. Mm -hmm. so, so part of what you're able to do maybe in your messaging, and that's where the messaging becomes very important, not just who you are and what you do, now you're going to start to talk with people and engage with them about why they would consider a change to begin with. So you explain, you know, we will be at your house within an hour of our appointment time. Or mm -hmm. if you're not happy, you let us know and, and we'll make it right. So that number two uh, point that you can write down would be to either uh, avoid pain or seek pleasure. I mean, why do you go to a car dealership and take a test drive, you know, in that car? You imagine yourself and a lifestyle and, and that luxury and the smell of the new car. That is, you know, the, the seeking the pleasurable part about it. And you're saying, you know, something, I deserve this. It's time I had a new car. You know, I've worked really hard. This is a reward for me. 
So it's only after you've done that proper branding that you can then move forward and start your messaging, talking with folks about how you can make their lives better, make it less painful or make it even, uh, even better. So the and it's of- important that we're doing these in this order also as well. Is it not, Chuck? I, it is. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know how you use the, the, the saying, uh, you got to pay your dues. Unfortunately, right. when you spend marketing money, you want to jump right to that last spot right. and you want all those phones to ring and come in. You know, I'm spending this money. I want this to come back to me right away. But you haven't paid those dues yet. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. What, what, once you get to that second phase to where you're going to make someone's life better or acknowledge the fact that they've had some problems in other area and get their attention, then you have the ability to move on to the next step to where you can then offer that solution. Why are you better? Why, sh- why should they even you know, consider you? Mm-hmm. Again, so that, that third spot is to where you're actually then conveying and providing that solution. So you brand well known, you've identified that some of your potential customers are having problems in certain areas. And then number three is that you can help them do better. Once you position yourself as that solution, only at that point do you then have the right to ask for that business. And number four is where you can typically make that sale. Outstanding. Right. So now, If you recall, I mentioned that there are five steps, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And I think there's not anybody here in this meeting who will say that something ends with the sale of a customer. You have to move then to that loyalty marketing, which is your last spot later on, whether you've developed an email list or whether you write handwritten thank you notes or you remember people on their birthdays or anniversaries or anything like that, because... Loyalty marketing costs you about 10 times less than it does to get an existing customer to rebuy than it does to gain a new customer. Mm -hmm. But you still have to pay those dues. If you're gaining new customers and new business and new awareness, you've got to go through that process. So if ever you're looking to develop a new marketing campaign for yourself because you've taken on a new product line or a new service, write those four or five steps down and identify what then are you going to do to accomplish that? You know, that, and I I think that for a local business, a small business, uh, someone that's even regionally based, that's, that may be an oversimplification of marketing strategy, but it's a start and it's more than most of us are doing. And I think almost everyone here will have to admit now they've placed an ad here, they've placed an ad there, they've done a little bit here, there, and thrown it out to see what sticks. And guess what? You, you come back being disappointed. You come back uh, disappointed. You know, one of the things that, and I don't mean to, to, to cut you off here, I must throw this in. You also mentioned that consistency. And one of the things that I want to throw in also as well is the discipline. Because you also said a lot of folks, of course, we, we try to go from branding right to number four, right? The the phones are just going to start ringing and you haven't earned, uh, haven't built any relationships necessarily. Uh, You believe truly that you build it, they'll come, right? And that there's nothing in between that has to happen. And we are so much more demanding, are we not now as consumers today, where you do need to stand out uh, and there is something still to be said about, uh, you know what, uh, if there's an experience, when we go to you and I were talking about a car dealership that you'll never go back to again because it was your experience there. On the other hand, uh, you've talked about uh, at the same time, you talked about, I believe it was a mechanic uh, at the, in Frederick as well that you would continue to go to and you would send anyone else to in a heartbeat, different experience all the way, all the way uh, together. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone here will say word of mouth is my best form of advertising. And Mm -hmm. and it absolutely is. You know, Mm -hmm. bad news travels a lot faster than good news. Absolutely. But, you know, I attempted to purchase a vehicle from a very well-known car dealership 
at one point and I was immediately worked into the system. I mean, you know, the old phrase about throwing your keys up on the roof of the dealership, <laughs> you know, they, they had their system and I couldn't wait to get out and I couldn't wait to tell my friends about it. Either. Right. Right. But, Just as know. quickly, you couldn't wait to tell someone where not to go. And, and boy, is that a big deal today? Uh, loyalty. I'm so glad that you didn't stop at number four and talked about how important it is for the loyalty side because of how much harder it is to get a new person uh, to even get started with all of the competition out there mm -hmm. than to be able to keep who you have and show that appreciation. I don't think that that can be overstated. Yeah, no, it, without a doubt, you know, it, it costs you less money to keep a customer happy, but also if you're keeping that customer happy, they are then going to tell other folks. And, you know, you and you and I, Eddie, are firm believers in referral marketing. Also. Absolutely. And, you know, these folks are more than happy when they say, you know, something. I, I've been thinking about putting some new carpet in my house. Where would you recommend, you know, generally speaking, most of us can come up with someone that we've been very happy with. And that we would put our reputation on the lines to recommend. That's right. That's right. In a heartbeat. And something that you mentioned as well that I believe we need to repeat. And it was in the messaging, the intentional messaging. When you were talking about the pain point, avoiding the negative or enhancing the positive, how intentional that needs to be. And that's before the solution. So solving the problem is basically what you know we are all doing, right? Because that's how we end up making a sale. We have to identify that person's problem, their pain point, I believe is the way you put it, and then show them how are we going to either solve that problem or enhance the, the positive that they're already experiencing, but they want to go to another level. I thought that analogy with that new car Everybody knows the new car smell. You just automatically go into your own world. You, you fit in the seat right. You're cruising around, and all of a sudden, you're turning the wheel with one hand, right? <laughs> and that's that's pretty much where you own it, right? That's where the rubber meets the road, if you will. Would you agree? Yeah. Let me give you an example. Like a, um, I like Italian food, okay? If I see an ad out there for a restaurant that, I've never been to before. And I'm always, I, I'm obviously always willing to try something new when it comes to places. <laughs> uh, you yeah, know, that, that's no secret. But if I see an ad to where someone says, uh, mama's Italian kitchen, pizzas, subs, lasagna, baked goods, uh, you know, all of that, I am far less likely to go to that place than Bella's Italian Kitchen, bringing the taste of old world Italy to your home in Hagerstown. Mm -hmm. Now that's intentional. Can you see the difference in the messaging? You could, you could feel, feel it, it brings a kind of like, ooh, that's an emotional, that's intentional as it gets, is it not? It's very simple. That's, you know, just one way of engaging with someone and you have to be intentional about that messaging. And again, I have hit upon something that will bring pleasure to someone. Absolutely. But, but yet mama's Italian kitchen will say, gosh, I ran ads all the time and I didn't get any response from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's not always the medium. I hate to tell you this. Sometimes you have to put some thought into how are you going to pull those customers in? And they probably do their own marketing. <laughs> that might be the case as well. Listen, as we're wrapping up here, I want to make sure I'd be remiss if I didn't get this information out. Chuck, how can our audience get in contact with you for, uh, you're obviously a wealth of information. This has been wonderful. I don't know about everybody else, but I've got a ton of notes. How can everyone get in contact with you so that they can sit down and be that much more uh, conversational and consultative with you? Yeah, sure. And, and conversations like this are free. They don't cost you anything. The, the easiest way to get a hold of me is first initial last name at HagerstownMag.com. So C Boatler at HagerstownMag.com. And my last name is spelled B-O-T-E-L-E-R. So it's C B-O-T-E-L-E-R at HagerstownMag.com. And, you know, anyone, if you want to email me and just grab coffee and talk about a marketing challenge that you've had, 
I, I love these stories. I love bouncing around ideas that could have helped someone do better so that the mm-hmm. next time around they're able to do better business. And uh, somewhere down the line, they'll say, you know, that, that Chuck guy kind of knows what he's talking about. And I really appreciate taking some time to pick his brain. You bet. Hey, listen, Why? while, while we're at it, uh, speaking of stories, if you can do it very quickly, I want you to end us with the story of Elaine. Yep. Uh, a lady that I spoke with a couple of years ago, um, name was Elaine. I had a client that used to uh, spend money with me all the time. The guy got so busy, he ultimately said, I've got to hire a marketing expert. Now, I'm, I'm a fan of digital marketing. I'm a fan of a good media mix. You know, you've got your branding elements. You've got your engagement elements. You've got your search elements. It, it, it all works together. So this person came to the table with a certain bias that all she knew was digital, pulled the guy's budget completely from what he was spending with me in print, put it all into digital, you know, lost a client. A mm-hmm. uh, year or two later, I sat down and talked with uh, this Elaine person. And I said, just out of curiosity, how's Ted's business doing now? And she told me with an absolutely straight face, she said, oh. well, his revenue in his business has dropped about 40%, mm-hmm. but his engagements are through the roof. And I'm still two years, two, three years later, scratching my head over that, you know, so make sure, you know, that, that, you know, what you're measuring. I mean, impressions, clicks, engagements, they're wonderful. They, they keep people engaged. They don't always pay the rent. Absolutely. I tell you what, folks, you know, they say facts tell, but stories are the ones that sell because that's what everyone can relate to. Chuck, this has been great. We could have gone on and on and on. I tell you what, I know I'll be sitting down with you and uh, I want to remind everyone, please feel free to put your information in the chat, get in contact with Chuck and I hope that you all will take these tips, these gold nuggets and put them to use for your business as well. So again, thanks everyone again for your time. Chuck, thank you so much for your time as well and these tips. And we look forward to seeing you all on the next Your Next Customer because remember, small business, we know it absolutely is big business now more than ever. So let's get up, get dressed and get the word out and get it out the right way, right, Chuck? Absolutely. Thanks, Eddie. It's been a You bet. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. And thank you, Washington County Chamber of Commerce. All right, I have flipped the script and we are back. Am I back with everybody? Yes, sir. Outstanding. All right, here we are. I'll tell you what, uh, did did anybody have a blast like me? That was awesome, was it not? And that's why I was so excited to be able to sit down with Chuck because he's a wealth of info. And we also have him right here. We have the double uh, dipping as far as that goes because we also have him live here for any questions and engagement that we can have for part two, if you will. So I want to open this up because I know that there's an awful lot of experience here going around the Zoom room today, and uh, hopefully you all took some copious notes. And I want to ask everyone, go ahead, unless you have, of course, distractions and noise in the background, go right ahead and come off mute and uh, let us know what some of your first thoughts are in reference to something that uh, you wrote down first. Uh, What's the very first note that you wrote down because it impacted you in terms of what Chuck was saying? And uh, you all just go right ahead and jump on in and let's go from there. Hello. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think I took the note down wrong. Um, But he was saying the difference between um, placing marketing, pulling together. And I think I missed one, one more thing, but I put down strategy. I don't know if I was right. Yeah, the, there's really a difference between just doing the marketing and actually planning marketing strategy. Uh, there is a real difference. I mean, you can place the ads and tell folks that you're doing the marketing, but you really need to identify what your end game is. What are you hoping to accomplish before you even do uh, those placement uh, and execution activities? Got it. Thank you. Outstanding. Yeah, great point. Courtney, I think you had jumped in there too at the same time. Go right ahead. Yeah. So I had a question, like the first, the first step of your five activities, the branding. 
you know, what, what do you want to be known for? So most, most people, when you create your website or whatever you have, you know, your tagline that you put on your main page or whatever, um, is that what you would consider your branding or do you need, would you say, come up with something completely different that you would use and everything else for like, this is my branding? Um, I think that anything that ties you to who you are and what you do is the branding. Uh, you're not at the point of asking for the order yet. You're just using those activities to become better known. Um, you know, whether you have signs up everywhere or you're placing a, a lot of consistent ads in places or you're going to events, you want to make it seem like uh, you're everywhere, even if you're not spending the money to be everywhere. So it's just a, a I think the key word to that is really going to be visibility. How visible are you? And okay. visibility doesn't necessarily result into measured sales yet. You're not at that point. But unless they know about you, they're then not going to be receptive and see you as a thought leader uh, who's qualified to uh, deal with their problems and their solutions. So you just want basically something that's going to be who you are, that you need to put out to everybody. And just keep it as that consistent to everyone. Yeah, just just that's the first step. You're you're not you're not getting sales off of that yet, and that's unfortunately what a lot of people expect when they spend money is they want the, uh, the you know the cash to come back to them. But it's really being visible, you know, making sure you've got something that's easily memorable. Thank you. Good stuff. Good stuff. Chuck, while someone else is getting ready to chime in, I just wanted to, to put a thought out and maybe others can relate to this as well. We always talk about building relationships, especially when we're in person, right? When that, especially now, we call it the good old days when we could meet more in person and we're starting to get back to that a little bit, whether it's in one-to-ones and restaurants and so forth, that kind of thing, small gatherings. Always we're talking about the importance of building relationships. Well, when I was listening to you talking about branding, being consistent, avoiding the pain and seeking the pleasure. All of that strategy is also, is it not another way of building relationships? You are, you're, you're trying to do that even over all of these other mediums because of when the very first one is, what do you want to be known for? Man, what, what a great uh, just attitude and question to ask yourself going in as opposed to not just what do I do? But what do I want to be known for? Because a lot of other people do what you do. But what do you want to be known for? And that's where I think you start to build relationships across that medium. Is that is that a, a, a good way to look at that also as well, do you think? Well, I, I think it, it simply goes back to the fact that we buy from uh, people that we know and trust. We don't tend to uh, by the first person that, that pops up if we don't know them, trust them, heard good things about them. So you have to do that legwork in advance. So yes, whether it's a direct relationship like you know we have when we're talking or whether you've done enough branding and someone's realizing their pain points that, okay, this company gets it. I should at least call them and see what they can do for me. So yes, it, it is building relationships. That's how any sale is made is through the building of a relationship and the fact that you can do something for someone else that they need. Absolutely. Good stuff. Go right ahead and chime in, y'all. We've got a, uh, we're working on a really good time here. Can you hear me, Eddie? I can, Mr. Worthy. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, well, first off, Chuck, thank you so much. I really did appreciate your presentation. There's a couple things that stood out for me that I'm reminded of in the next 34 years. In business. And, and, the one, and the one thing is that the relationship part that you talked about, right? Um, I heard a, a while ago, and, and it, it's, come, it's come to be very true for me in my business. People are six times more likely to do business with you when you had a conversation with them about something other than business. Mm. Six times more likely, right? Because we're getting to understand the person from the inside out and who they are at their core. Mm. And, and, th and in that conversation, you end up doing what? Identifying, identifying commonality that exists, that takes a deeper dive in understanding uh, who the person is in terms of not only the, the service that they offer, but the, the person who is offering the service. And then the second thing, uh, Chuck, that came, came to mind for me 
It's the power of edification, right? Relationships are so important now more than ever because the decision you make at the front end will make a tremendous difference on the back end. So if, if, if I want to introduce someone to a client of mine and make a referral, if I feel confident in my ability to edify this individual, the person I'm referring, who I'm referring that person to, if you will, feels much more comfortable knowing that I can speak not only intelligently about what this person can do, but who the person is in terms of, in terms of uh, integrity and the ability to deliver on the promise. And so the relationship part is huge in the space that I find myself in, particularly in the last 24 months. Outstanding, great points. Great points, you bet. And and Karen, I can tell you're just chomping at the, just just ready to just 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 add some comments in here also as well. Uh, please please go Actually, right. Yeah, was I, I will <laughs> just echo what Marvin said. So he said, you know how important relationships are in the space that he's in, and same for us. So as a community mm-hmm. bank, there's you know there's a number of banks in the area that that do what we do that offer some of the same banking services, but. Um, we've had to to work and figure out what sets us apart and really work to tell our story and our brand and have had some conversations with Chuck. um, And he was able to outline a um, marketing plan, kind of a recommendation for us. And so we have talked with him a a little bit and um, he's exactly right. We've experienced the same thing with digital. So the clicks and impressions are great, but what do they really get us? And so we were kind of late adopters of digital and still Um, do a mix of digital print billboards, um, just trying to find out what the right mix is for each market that we're in. So, you know, marketing is one of those spaces that it's so hard to determine your ROI and some of it is trial and error and you have to, to try some different things and see what works for you. Absolutely. Good stuff. And I've got to go ahead and say this also as well. Uh, Steve, where does entrepreneur operating systems come in in all of this? Because it has to be integrated all and weaved all throughout this, sir. So I, I, I want to go ahead and get your comments as well as our guest today. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for that. Was, uh, and Chuck, really good presentation. Appreciated hearing that. Eddie, really good job facilitating that. Um, you know, EOS has a tool. So EOS is a, is a framework and a structure that helps business owners take the 136 things that are happening each and every day. Some of them are the good and normal things that happen in business. Some of them are the, the challenges or issues, the problems. And it, it's a model that helps kind of bring all that stuff together to make it land because all the things that are happening are always symptoms of, of the actual core issues and, and opportunities that are always happening in business. And one of the really practical tools that EOS uses is something called the Vision Traction Organizer. Um, and that's a, it's eight questions to kind of walk through um, what is a business really up to when it comes to their vision and how they're going to execute it. And Chuck, a lot of things that you were talking about uh, does show up in one of those questions, which is like, what's the marketing strategy for a business? And I appreciate hearing you, Chuck, maybe the first two points, there's some different maybe language and, and vocabulary we'd use in EOS. Um, but for you, like the, the first question of what do you want to be known for? For us, that would actually be in the VTO. The second question, like, what's the core focus of your business? Um, and it's it's kind of surprising. A lot of businesses, they start out with a core focus, an idea of what they do. But the longer they stay in business, they kind of fall away from it. And we can always think of businesses that, like, they, they create so much more of their product line. They, they end up doing too much, and they fall out of their sweet spot. And the core focus is, well, what's your sweet spot? So, Chuck, you asked, like, what do you want to be known for? Right. Yeah, what is the thing that you do really well? And that's your sweet spot. It's so important to know before you start marketing. And then in the VTO too, we asked the, in the marketing strategy question, we go like, what's your guarantee? And that sounded to me, Chuck, like what you were talking about in the second question. Um, mm-hmm. How do you, how do you uh, help people avoid the negative and pursue the positive? The guarantee is how do you help the customer remove the barrier? You know, like the barrier to, the barrier to really uh, uh, um, being loyal to your product everyone kind of comes with a natural concern sometimes where, and someone on the call before said customers are even more maybe skeptical or suspicious or just really careful with the decisions they're making. And we would say like, what's the guarantee you give to that customer? What's your money back guarantee or what's your guarantee for service? And Chuck, you used some other examples to really help them pursue the pleasure. Um, so yeah, I thought there were, there were a lot of things that kind of overlap. Um, and in EOS that the VTO, the vision traction organizer, that's, 
maybe just a few things of those eight questions we always walk through to really get what's your vision and what's your core focus. Then like, how do we ask a number of questions know how you're going to execute that? I, I tell you what, great stuff. And, and this is what your next customer is all about. Sales, marketing, and good old fashioned customer service. We've been talking about all of that because Chuck, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't wrap up with uh, you know your, your fifth point and you were talking about loyalty marketing, but just before going to that, because we know how important that is also as well. Sean, I wanted to give you an opportunity as well. And thanks for still here being with us also as well, sir. Did you have some comments also to share with us? Um, right now, actually, I, I uh, was sitting here listening to Chuck and, and the, uh, the other guests. And, you know, it's, it's uh, I'm in 100% agreement. You have to know what you're in business for. What is your core product? What are you trying to do um, to reach the community? Who do you want to reach? Who's your target audience? And, mm -hmm. you know, Chuck is absolutely right. I've, uh, I've been in the publishing business since 1998. And um, I've seen a lot of businesses come and go over the years. Obviously, that's, that's the, way it, the, way, the way it works. And, and unfortunately, a lot of times, it is because they get away from their core business, what they're doing, what their sweet spot is, uh, per se. They, they get too busy, too, they, they forget about what they initially started, started um, their business for and, and their core customer. Um, so I, I think that is, is one of the major points that, that I'm taking from this is you definitely need to um, you know, know your core audience, know your target, and don't and don't sway too far from it. And and even when times are good, you know, obviously we've all been experiencing quite a quite a 18 months. Wouldn't go as far as 24, but say 18 months. We we've um, we've all have ex all have experienced um, you know, the high lows of of uh, of the of the pandemic. And when the times are good, you you can't get away from your marketing. I mean, I, I've seen that happen um, quite a few times. Oh, well, everything's going well. Um, you know, our sales are booming. We don't need the market. But those days will end um, when the times aren't so good. And like Chuck said, you want your customers to, to know you. Um, you know, you've got to stay in front, of your, in front of your customer. And it doesn't matter what industry, what business, restaurants, um, you know, home services, um, anything. You've got to stay in front of your customers. It, the, the day you forget is the day you start dying, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I mean, and, and, and I've seen it. I, I've seen it uh, quite a few times over the years. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. That, that, yeah. That, that's great stuff. And as we, you touched on, it, it, it won't always be this way. You know, we are going to come out of this as well. And the reason I'm also so excited to get this information out, not now just from Chuck, but from this entire room, is because, you know, as the coach always asks us coming up, the, a good coach always puts you in position to win. We've always heard that before. And even when it seems like you're just kind of, man, running in molasses, Right. I mean, you, you're just not getting where you want to get fast enough any kind of way, but you're putting all of this effort in. I think about two things. I think about, number one, that phrase of how you need your positioning yourself so that when things do get better, you're not starting from scratch. Man, you've been there, done that. Like the coach says, act like you've been there. Right. And so you are already in the right place. But I also think about that one picture where everyone has seen this before, where the duck is on the top of the, the, the water on the serene picture of the duck that's, that's just sitting out there right in the middle of the lake. And it just looks so calm and peaceful. And then they show the shot under the water and how his legs are just going, right? I mean, just moving and what have you. That's the activity that you don't see, but that everybody has put in. And that's what puts him in position to be able to be wherever it is he needs to be and, and position himself accordingly. So with that, I want to pivot because we've still got a couple of minutes and then I want to make sure I hurry up and turn it back over to Brianna because she's got some cool things to share for us as well. But let's always remember the loyalty 
marketing. I thought that was huge. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about that also a little bit because Chuck's told us that it costs 10 times less to be able to hold on to the person who already believes in you than it does to gain a new customer. Speaking of all of that energy necessary to do that. And so Karen, I wanna go back to you if I may in this one, because of the industry that you're in, uh, super competitive. And you already mentioned that you had that conversation and work with Chuck on how to, I, 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 the word I like to use, how to differentiate yourself, right? From all those others who say that they do what you do also as well. What do you do in terms of loyalty marketing that you could leave a, a tip for us and uh, you're, that you all have obviously mastered in your, I can say that because we've been a, a recipient of that and, and it felt heartfelt, it really did. Can you give us a, an example of that? Yeah, so um, I'll say over, over the last 12 to 18 months, like Sean said, we did kind of flip our marketing to be less product driven and more relationship driven. And so we changed our tagline from your community, your bank to we're right here. And so we've really branded we're right here to not just be our locations, but our people and our products too. Um, but our marketing has really taken a turn to more um, community focus instead of product focus and more relationship building instead of what we can sell to you. So just getting to know our customers, total picture, total relationship, instead of just focusing on sales. See that, that we're right here. And especially with, and that's why I asked you, and thank you so much for, for sharing that, because especially in your industry, I don't know of anybody who doesn't still understand and want in their bank to, you can almost have a picture of someone shaking hands, You right? That's just kind of what you want and what you want to see. I think that really kind of sums it up when you're talking about your local bank, because they know you by your first name. Uh, in fact, it may even be generational where they, you know, yeah. someone is now goes across the, the age lines, if you will, in that sense. And so thanks so much for that. I think that's so special. And we've got to remember to take care of those who are taking care of you, mm -hmm. right? The that's ones right. that have been there already, especially mm -hmm. through whatever times and all that, they didn't start looking elsewhere. There's a reason. And you might want to do this. Here's a tip. Ask them, why are they still there with you? You might want to think about reaching out in some form or fashion Ask them, hey, why are you here? You, you could be anywhere else and we so appreciate you. Could you give me an example of why? Because you know what your customers will do? They'll tell you. They would certainly tell you why they leave if you caught if you could ever catch up to them after they're gone, right? Most of the time we don't get a chance to do that. But how about checking out and celebrating them while they're here? And that, that's an important thing as well. I wanted to leave you with that. Listen, this has been phenomenal. I'm going to turn it back over to our host with the most, Ms. Brianna, and our business partner at your Washington County Chamber of Commerce, because she's got some cool things to share with us as well. Brianna, take it away. All right. Hi again, everyone. So um, we actually have a giveaway that we're going to do real quick, and it is a $10 gift card to Stonehouse Urban Winery. So what I've done is put everyone's um, name into a random wheel name generator thing, and I'm going to share my screen. And so you guys can see it spin around and then we'll be able to give something away here. So let me see. Your screen. All right, can everyone see it? We got it. All right, and here we go. This is so cool. The virtual wheel of fortune, so very cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like our winner is actually our guest speaker today. All right, so congrats. Our <laughs> Chuck, and thank you for uh, being our interviewee once again. And thank you, Eddie, for being our host as always. Of course, you bet. And uh, happy to give that gift card away also as well. Chuck, I hope that you and Jill enjoy that uh, when the time is right also as well to come on out to Stonehouse Urban Winery. And of course, anybody who was wondering, of course, they're a member of your Washington County Chamber of Commerce. They wouldn't have been in the running to get that done. Uh, and this is a place where we can absolutely go out there and relax. Uh, who doesn't like a good glass of wine uh, these days? And I mean good wine uh, in that sense as well. So ladies and gentlemen, before we go, uh, Brianna touched on this also as well. Can't emphasize it enough. If you haven't already 
please get to the chat and put your contact information in there, maybe a line to remind everyone and what it is that you do, because remember the networking goes on in between the events, not at the event. And that's where those relationships are built and made etched in stone and then get talked about here at your next customer as Karen did in talking about how she's already worked with Chuck. I am working with Chuck also as well. And just an incredible resource to sit down, like he said, just to have the conversation that's free. What are you missing if you're not reaching out to your fellow business partners who can relate to and are going through the same thing you're going through also as well. Why not just go ahead and put our heads together with all of this wonderful experience and come up with answers as opposed to having more questions, right? Because when, if you ever notice when you have more questions and answers, it's more expensive. <laughs> you ever notice that? That's just kind of the way it works. So let's take a moment in case anyone else has any last minute uh, things that they would like to say, by all means, go right ahead, while open yourself on up, but let's take a quick minute. Make sure you put your information here in the chat. Got one minute. Chuck, do you have any um, book recommendations? Chuck, did you hear that? Do you have any book recommendations? I believe that was the question. Um, I, If you go on Amazon and you type in uh, Richard Rosen, Convergence Marketing, you'll find something that's pretty good. Um, you know, again, the, the, the media choices don't matter as much as the concept of bringing your branding and your direct response together into one place eventually. That would that would be probably the, the main one that I would recommend. Anyone else? Because I know we got some avid readers out here. Mr. Worthy, I know you uh, do. And Mr. King, even though I just met you, I'm sure you do. Courtney, I know you've put some out there before in the past because I know you read a lot as well. I, I certainly would always recommend um, a copy of Traction. It's, this, is a, this is a book that outlines the EOS model. Um, and I always love meeting with people to connect about EOS and always share a book and give you a free book as well if you're up for that conversation. Um, a, a book that I read recently that's related to all areas of business is like how we find and retain strong employees. Um, and a great book I really enjoyed was called Hiring for Attitude. Uh, so I'd recommend that. That's always a book I recommend. I read it uh, within the last... 12 months and uh, really enjoyed it. Thought it had some great insights into it. Yeah. Outstanding. Steve, <laughs> I wanted to put my head down in shame because this was the last book that I just read. Hey, what the heck is EOS? There we go. <laughs> you be, Courtney, you should be able to answer now. What is it? No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> that, that, is, that is another one of the five books in the stack library. That's right. Yep. So. We, um, we're actually we're, we're implementing that in our office and it, oh, is, it is an amazing book um and it's amazing information so <laughs> if anybody if that is something that you do i highly recommend you guys get with steve because it's it, it's just it's awesome Cordy, are you working with an implementer um yes we have well we have a, a partner of ours who is has implemented in his office previously oh, so God. he's working with us to implement it in ours yeah. And it's, it's working. So it's, it's, it's fun, but yeah, we've, we've all read the book and so, yes. Good stuff. All yeah. right. Well, we're at the top of the hour. <clears throat> I want to respect everyone's time and listen, as we get ready to go off into our busy work week, make sure that we're taking care of ourselves, uh, stay safe, but stay busy. And let's make sure we're taking care of each other by reaching out and seeing what we can do to help each other's phone ring. Because think about it, if we're all concentrating on doing that at some point, helping each other's phone ring, wouldn't everybody's phone ring a little bit more? That's how we get your next customer. So thanks again, keep praying for our troops, stay busy, stay safe, and we'll see you the next time around y'all. God bless. Thanks a lot. And don't forget to record the chat. Make sure you record, right, Brianna? They can record the information in the chat room. Just go down to that little, those little three dots over there, that little ellipsis, and go ahead and hit that and then say, save the chat for all of this pertinent info. Thanks, everyone. God bless. Have a great week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.